by the world's best riders on the most technologically advanced two-wheeled machinery in existence. Schwantz had tested the new Suzuki at the Suzuka circuit several weeks prior to the race. What he found out in those test sessions came as good news to the Suzuki camp. Bad news for the opposition. The Texan had shattered the lap record while testing, and when it came down to race day, everyone was shooting for the Texan and his number 34 Pepsi Suzuki. The only rider to hang on to Schwantz was the defending world champion, Wayne Gardner, on the number one Honda. The Australian actually got by the American rider and led for a while until this breathtaking pass. In slow motion, you can see Schwantz on the throttle all the way through the turn, never letting up, committing himself to the pass and executing it perfectly. Gardner had to be not only surprised, but impressed as well. Schwantz and the other current top American riders have elevated the GP riding technique a couple of notches, as Kenny Roberts demonstrated so decisively in his career. Schwantz and company have come to realize that sliding the motorcycle, as learned through American dirt tracking, is often the fast way around. I think um, as fast as, as they go in Europe and in the World Championship stuff, you have, to, you have to be able to go out and ride 35 laps or however many laps the race consists of. You have to be able to go out and ride 35 laps, sliding the front tire, pushing, I mean, pushing the front tire, sliding the rear wheel the whole time. And um, I think that's, that's where the dirt track comes in. Um, Eddie Lawson and Kenny Roberts, everybody, Wayne Rainey, they've all ridden dirt track, and uh, I think it's really helped a lot. In the end, Schwantz, his sliding technique, and his Pepsi Suzuki crossed the Japanese GP finish line first. It was the Texans' first world championship victory in his first GP as a full-fledged factory rider. As you can tell by his exuberance on the cool-off lap, Schwantz was happy to say the least. As far as the Suzuki factory was concerned, he could have packed up and gone home. With the wins at Daytona and in the Japanese Grand Prix, Schwantz and Suzuki had scored the most important wins on the world racing schedule. Anything else would just be icing on the cake. The famed Nürburgring in Germany, along with Monza in Italy, and perhaps Brands Hatch in England. The Nürburgring is one of the most historically significant circuits in the world. Steeped in racing tradition, this track has been the site of many important moments in two- and four-wheel racing. The 1988 German Grand Prix would provide another memorable chapter in Nürburgring history. As the race unfolded under inclement skies, Schwanz and his Suzuki were on the move. The Texan was soon in the lead, riding away from the competition in the treacherous conditions. Schwanz has learned the circuits of Europe well. For an American coming over to contest the world championship, learning a specific track while setting up a bike is vital. Schwantz has developed his own method of acclimating himself and his machine to a new facility. I try and go out and, and try and learn all the, I guess, the really tough spots in the track. There's, you know, there's, there's two or three corners in most tracks that, that take quite a while to learn over just the other simple, basic right and left turn corners. Um, the main thing is just go out and, and practice the first couple sessions and, and just try and make your lines smooth around the track and then the next two sessions try and pick up the pace and try and get a good qualifying time in. In front of the appreciative German crowd, front wheel up in the air, Schwantz powered to victory. The Schwantz-Suzuki combination were now threats to pull off the victory wherever they raced. For Team Pepsi-Suzuki, 1988 was a surprisingly successful venture when you consider the fact that it was the first full year for their rider and for their Grand Prix motorcycle. It was a fantastic year. 1989 would be a tougher assignment. No longer would they be considered an outside, unproven entity. The opposition viewed them as a legitimate world title challenger. No longer could they count on the element of surprise. Everyone would begin 1989 with a clean slate. Honda, Yamaha, and Suzuki would be viewed as equals in the 1989 world title chase.